Here's another neat problem from Surway and Jewett. Uh, at ninth edition, chapter 24, this is problem number 17 in that chapter. Uh, this is number 4 on my student's web assign. So we have an infinitely long line of charge with some uniform charge density. So lambda is given to us. And the um, we're looking for the total electric flux through the surface of a sphere whose radius is big R. So that draws the picture out here. The big radius is like so. And the center of that sphere is some distance d from the from the charge. Okay, from the from the infinitely long line of charge. So the question is, um, what is the what is the flux when r is bigger than d and r is smaller than d? So let's take care of the r smaller than d first. This is this is uh, number A. Okay, well this is pretty simple. Um, if we consider a Gaussian surface to be our sphere itself, then the flux is simply, one way to find the flux is simply to find the, the charge enclosed, and because there's no charge enclosed in that, in that sphere when it's small, that flux should be zero. So if we submit our answer, cross our fingers, hope that physics works, it does. And so now let's consider what happens if R is greater than D. Okay, so we've got our, got our line of charge here, and now we consider a big, um, so this is, this is D to the center of this, of the sphere. Pardon me for not, not drawing this very well. But there's our big R. So now R is bigger than D. Okay. And so the idea here is the same. It, uh, if we draw our Gaussian surface to be the sphere itself, then what is the charge enclosed in that sphere? Well, the charge enclosed in that sphere is simply that amount of charge. Okay, all of this stuff on the outside does not uh, does not affect the electric field through the flux. It's only the charge that's on the inside that affects that flux. So, what is that charge? Well, if we knew the length of it, right, well, then we could use lambda, the, the linear density, to determine what that charge is. So. The linear density is that charge Q divided by L. Okay, so if we could figure out what this L is, this L being the charge that's the length of the rod that's on the inside, if we knew what that L was and we know what lambda is, we know that Q enclosed is simply lambda times L. So what is that L? Well, if we look at our geometry, let me draw it a little bit. So this is the L we want. This is D, and we know this is R. Okay, so we can see from Pythagoras, right, that that distance L is equal to the square root of D squared plus R squared. And that's really, that's, that's, sorry, that's not L, that is half of L, L over 2. So L is equal to 2 times that. Okay. And so the flux is simply the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught, and the charge enclosed is lambda times L, and L we see is 2 square root d squared plus r squared, all of that over epsilon naught. Okay, so this is a symbolic uh, answer here, so let's see if we can do this. We start off with a fraction. And then I'm just going to write my number first. We need a Greek letter lambda. Okay. We're going to then need the square root. So we'll go back to the operations. Square root. And we're going to need a couple of squareds in there. So we're going to have a d squared. Now I'm going to use my arrow key to move out. And then plus. And then this has got to be a big R. And we have to square that guy. And then underneath needs to be epsilon naught. So we go over to Greek, epsilon, and then back to operations for our subscript. And the subscript is a zero. It's not an O, it's a zero. Let's see if we type it in correctly. Oh my goodness, what did we miss? Ha! Ah! How silly. Um, the R is the hypotenuse, of course.
Okay, and so we need to write uh, r squared minus d squared. That's what happens when you do things in your head. So r squared minus d squared. Let's see if that is how to fix it. Gotta be careful. All right, that's it for that problem.